I just read an article from like this like tech guy, right? And he was talking about how in five years, AI is going to be taking basically like every entry level collar job. AI could wipe out half of all entry level white collar jobs. And that's not according to like some conspiracy theorists. That's according to Anthropic CEO. The jobs that are safest from being replaced by AI and automation. Number 10 on the list. Can you guess what it is? I would say like a, a nurse or something, right? Mm, pretty good. What's up, Cyberhawks? I'm back. Today's video, we're going to be going over some AI videos. And yeah, AI is coming fast. And yeah, a lot of people calling it a bloodbath, you know, certain sectors. Other sectors are utilizing the AI to help them out so that they can do their job even better, even faster, even stronger. So we're going to be looking at a few videos. I kind of just be sharing my thoughts on the, like what I'm seeing, like my cyber side, but also what they're talking about as well. Oh, we can get some good insights of the future of a freaking eye. So like, not just the future, future, but like the future as in like next month. <laughs> so anyway, let's go ahead and play the first video and yeah, we'll go from there. He is sounding the alarm about the technology he's spearheading. Anthropic CEO Dario Amodi, the head of the company behind AI model Claude 4, has a blunt warning, telling the website Axios half of all entry-level white-collar jobs could be wiped out by artificial intelligence within five years, potentially driving the unemployment rate up to 20%. He says industries most at risk include law, marketing, tech, and finance. These new generative AI technologies pose a real risk to early career knowledge jobs. In recent months, AI has shown stunning capabilities from generating hyper-realistic fake videos to diagnosing rare diseases through data analysis. The state Supreme Court in Arizona is even using AI-powered avatars to act as reporters and summarize court rulings. My AI colleague Daniel and I will be bringing you regular updates. AI's rapid rise could bring real benefits, but also real disruption. The people most likely to be hit first, young, college-educated workers in their first job before they've built experience or seniority. Who don't yet have the work experience to be a sort of a manager of a team of AI agents. Some major companies already downsizing. Walmart cutting 1,500 corporate jobs, part of a technology-led restructuring. Microsoft laying off 6,000, saying it's aligning for the AI era. So how can you protect your career? Experts say double down on what AI struggles with, making human connections and doing things in person. If you can do your job locked in a closet with a computer, those are the things that are more worrying for AI. Things that have to be in person and really with people tend to be safer. And learn to work with AI, not against it. It's really important that you've mastered your craft, your area of expertise, augmented by this technology okay okay and then there's a, a lot of different things on there so let's go over the first part right here on the 4.2 percent they're saying it could go up to like 20 percent estimated within the, what, the next five years so that would be crazy that would change a lot of different things i think the notion of ubi would be something that i could see being brought up too around this i remember when ubi first came out and like seeing the different sides but no one even was thinking or not, not the majority, not 99% of the people were thinking about the AI and how that aspect and how technology like that can really take these jobs and not just like lower paying job, but like higher up stuff too, you know, you know, in regards to like, let's say coding, different stuff like that, that were, you know, higher paying, but now the AI can create all the code, you know, for you. Next up, the big industries, law, marketing, tech, and finance. I can do the AI again, targeting a lot of different tech jobs. You're kind of seeing that now finance. Yeah, I can, I, yeah, I can see all of these marketing, especially marketing, anything dealing with like copywriting as well, artwork. That's another big one. Yeah. She also talks about stuff like being in person and I don't think those, I don't think all of those are necessarily okay. Jobs that require you to like talk to other people. I don't necessarily think those are that much safer. I guess if you have to be in person and you're not able to talk, I can see them being a little bit safer, but like there's a whole lot of like call center jobs that you can use AI for to do like the outbound calling. When you call into these companies, you're usually talking to a machine already. When I was trying to do some things with one of my banks, 
I was contacting them and I was talking to the machine for like so long, you know, to get me to the, like, I guess the correct department. I had like an issue with my phone today and I was having issues to actually get to a person. And I finally got to a person and then my phone disconnected. So I had to call again. I ended up going a separate route on the different voice menus with the machine. And it gave me what I needed. It gave me how I could fix my issue. So I ended up turning off my phone. Well, prior to restarting my phone, I ended up turning off my internet and all my internet, my Wi-Fi, 5G, and then restarted my phone. It, it fixed the issue. So like jobs like that where you want to talk to somebody, I could see AI still taking a lot of those. But I guess the ones that you really got to be in person, I guess. But even still, man, like you got the AI freaking avatars and stuff now. It's like, just give me a screen. You can have your AI avatar talking to the, you know, business people. But it's interesting to see in the Walmart and Microsoft layoffs. Microsoft having 6,000 job layoffs. But I don't have a number on like how many people they actually hire. So I don't know like how, how big of a percentage that is. That 1%, 2%. 10%. I don't have like a number for that. So I think that will help out a lot. Just seeing 6,000 sounds like a lot and it is, but you know, again, I don't, I don't have a number of how many jobs they currently have for people. I don't know if it's hundreds of thousands, I don't know if millions if you come all over the world and different stuff like that, even over here. So, you know, that 6,000 6, could be just like less than 1% of their total thing. But yeah, you will be seeing more companies uh, laying out people and yeah, it's, just, it's, it is what it is. So I would do what she said recommended utilizing AI to help you out with your job. I definitely recommend that. I use it. I use, I use that to help me out with different things like job related, business related, et cetera, et cetera, related. It's something that you can, you, you know, utilize the AI for Heck, even some of the tech that you use for your company, that tech right there could in the background that you're not aware of could just be using AI as well to help out. So yeah, AI is definitely um, everywhere. It is definitely everywhere. And this is a great time again, to utilize it, to help you out, to help you out, you know, where you're trying to go, because it can definitely expedite things a lot. And you don't want to be one of the people like, oh, AI is not going to be nothing. It's not going to do this, not going to do that. And then it comes and take your job or, or competition are utilizing it and they're able to beat you. You don't want to be in that place. So hopefully if you're on the tech side and you're already subscribed to the channel, hopefully you're already aware of this and you're already kind of, you know, thinking more, you know, forward. But anyway, let's go ahead and play the next video here talking about the careers in AI. I'm definitely intrigued to see what jobs she's talking about. In AI and their median salaries. Big data analyst with median salary of over 133,000. UX designer developer with median salary of over 77,000. Natural language processing engineer with median salary of over 111,000. Researcher with median salary of over 53,000. Research scientist with median salary of over 123,000. Software engineer with median salary of over 88,000. AI engineer with median salary of over 126,000. Data mining and analysis with median salary of over 93,000. Machine learning engineer with median salary of over 145,000. BI developer with median salary of over 92,000. Robotics engineer with median salary of over 100,000. And computer vision engineer with median salary of 104,000. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Some of these I have never heard about, like the computer vision, vision engineer. I'm, I'm definitely intrigued to see, you know, what's that about? Data mining analyst, machine learning engineer. Yeah, a lot of these are six figures or day near own it. So, you know, if you're looking for like a new career path, hey, this is going to be some stuff you can definitely look into for sure. If you're not looking, you know, to be in AI, you can look at trade jobs. You can look at trade jobs, you know, being a plumber, working with your hands, HVAC, those can make some bank, especially now as well. So again, like you got the technical side, a lot of stuff going towards the AI side, but again, like the trades are still there. I've been seeing like, there's been like a whole lot more openings now. A lot, a lot of people aren't even interested, you know, doing that type of work. So, Hey, again, if you're watching the channel, you're not really that techie. You still have another avenue with like these different trades as well. And if you know the AI and you know the trades, man, you can really do a lot. If you know, like know your tech side and you know the trades, you know, you can, you can use that to create your own, like, you know, your own AI company, your own plumbing, you know, being able to utilize AI to create web page quick have, you know, everything situated there with virtual people, virtual assistants taking calls in, for example, you can utilize both of those. It's it, like, you don't have to be just one or the other. Like 
I just know tech. I don't know anything with my hands or I just know this for my hands. I, I don't I don't know any tech I feel like utilize both. You can really make some bank. But yeah, if you already know, like AI stuff, though, right now, man. Yeah. Yeah. You are you are in a good you are in a good good place right now, for sure. And if you don't, I think this is a great time to learn all that, it's, you know, different stuff. I think AWS, you know, Amazon Web Services, I think they have a ai ai certification yeah i want to say they do i want to say like they have maybe like one or two i know microsoft does stand their ai thing and that i end up i may have to end up taking just so i can like learn more you know so get like some of the basics down so i think that can help me out as well but again you don't necessarily have to like know all the technical technical stuff like that for ai because again you can be like a prompt engineer or you can like get good at prompting and you can make money with prompting you know being able to talk to the different different AI services to help you out with creating like your PowerPoint slides, helping it to create your like your YouTube agent so that it can tell you what type of videos you should create, what type of content you should post on your Twitter pages, et cetera, et cetera. Even myself with YouTube, I've been using I've been utilizing AI on my fitness channel, for example, to help me out with my imagery, my profile, banner, all of that, my videos, how I should title it the description, the tags. And my first video, I think I got like 400 views on a brand new channel, which is crazy. I've never had that happen ever. Usually when I've created like a brand new channel, I might get like one view maybe, and that's it. It takes like a long time of being consistent for me to get uh, like, you know, multiple views, you know, followers and whatnot. But for the fact that I just did, I just utilized the AI to help me out with the content, you know, production saved out so much time, got a whole lot of views and I got like followers just from one freaking video, you know, with utilizing the AI to help me out. So yeah, I'm consistent on there. I'm pretty sure they can grow a lot. And again, that's for you guys as well, being consistent with this. Next up, let's go ahead and see what she's talking about with the uh, CEO going over AI, taking over half of all entry level jobs. So let's see what she's talking about. AI could wipe out half of all entry-level white-collar jobs. And that's not according to, like, some conspiracy theorists. That's according to Anthropic CEO. Anthropic's whole focus is on responsible AI and leveraging AI to serve humanity's long-term well-being. So understandably, the CEO feels like it's important that people are realistic about the potential of AI to actually take away jobs. In the next five years, we could see unemployment spike to between 10 and 20%. And that would exceed the kind of unemployment rates that we were seeing during the Great Recession and during the pandemic. So his encouragement is that the government and companies actually start preparing the country for what's coming. If this transition were to happen in a really ethical way, there could be some really interesting outcomes. For example, earlier this year, Reid Hoffman talked about how the 9 to 5 workday might be extinct. He's a potential for a future where so much productivity is being gained from AI and robots that actually people can be compensated for things that aren't currently compensated, like parenting. Which, by the way, might be future inspired by the Jetsons, and I'm going to age myself here, but on the Jetsons, George would go into the office just two days a week for an hour each day. That was all he had to do because robots were doing everything else. So yeah, maybe we're headed for a future where so much of what's required for society to function is handled by AI and robots that we're all able to just enjoy our lives. Or more realistically, what entry-level work looks like might change. Maybe we'll see people interested in white-collar fields need to spend more time in their education phase and doing internships. Maybe it means people need to be less focused on getting careers in the corporate and tech spaces and focus on other industries or see corporate and tech as things you transition into over time. Personally, as someone who's not an expert and just shares my opinions on here, I think the best thing that people can do right now is figure out how to use AI to accelerate their results. Because I do ultimately think those are the people whose jobs are going to be safe. Bam, that last part, that last part right there. Utilizing the AI to help you accelerate your currentness, wherever you're currently at, utilize the AI to get to that next point. Now, I wanted to go to the this part right here, talking about the being extinct, the nine to five. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen in the next 10 years. I don't think within 10 years, they're going to be extinct and no one's going to be working nine to five. I mean, what about the people? What about the gas station people, for example? People at 7-Eleven, for example, saying they're just going to go extinct. <laughs> people are going to be going to the store late at night to get some gas. Get some Doritos, get some chips. You know, he's like, we still got stores and different stuff like that. So I don't know if he exactly said that, or again, the title itself, the person kind of just paraphrasing it to make it seem, you know, very dire so that you read. That's what that, that's what that is right there. No, and then in 10 years, a nine to five workday is not going to be extinct. Now, do I think there will be maybe like a restructure in some places? I can see that. I could see some places having that restructure, but I mean, it's a lot of jobs still 
like again, like the gas station, for example, you want to be working like their nine to five there and other jobs like that. They're going to be working your nine to five like that. But I could see some restructuring going on in some sectors and then that applying to other sectors. You know, once we get like the AI into like machine bodies that can like move around and different stuff, then yeah, that's when, yeah, we can see a lot of even more change because now you got a physical body for this AI that can do everything, you know, on the tech, not only tech the logical side, but also on the physical side as well in our world versus just in the digital world. So, you know, that's something to think about. Now, she also talked about the Jetsons, and I never knew that he only worked an hour for like two days a week. That is interesting. Now I may have to just do some reviews on the Jetsons now and kind of seeing how some of that tech there, how that would apply, I guess, in our day to day, or do I see ourselves going towards that now? I'm definitely intrigued. I'm definitely intrigued because I've, I've only seen like a little bit of the Jetsons like here and there, but like not that much. I like, I guess I watch more of the Flintstones of anything, I'm like thanks to my parents or whatnot. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely intrigued on that. Also the 20%, you know, we saw that from the other post 20%. They're saying maybe like the unemployment rate and it could even go higher depending on, you know, how things go. But again, it's targeting a lot of different high paying fields as well. But if you're utilizing the AI, especially like right now, trying to get into it, trying to learn it, you will be at a better position versus somebody who's trying to avoid it or who's trying to attack it right now. So that's my two cents there. And lastly, let's go ahead and play this video here being replaced by AI and automation. Let's see what she is talking about. Well, if we can get this. The jobs that are safest from being replaced by AI and automation. Number 10 on the list. Can you guess what it is? I would say like a nurse or something, right? Mm, pretty good. An occupational therapist. Number eight on the list is physical therapist, followed by, this one kind of surprised me, is an athletic trainer. Number six is coaches and scouts. That makes sense. Number five is a nursing instructor and teacher post-secondary. Number two is so surprising. Can you guess? It's not healthcare. It's not blue collar. Can you give me industry? Entertainment. Mm, a little singer. Okay. 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 I like that video. You know, had me guessing which one want to be next. Another one, or maybe the physical therapist, I guess they can kind of go along the size of like a masseuse. I can say that one being harder, you know, taking a longer for the AI to take over. Because again, that's physical, you know, getting the right points that you need in your back, your thighs, and all the other areas, you know, and just having that human aspect there. I can definitely see that being a harder one. With the healthcare, I've been like watching some content from healthcare people talking about how AI has been like slowly being integrated into different things and some of like the new tech it can really like wipe out like a lot of different people. If one video I actually went over on one of my other channels, probably this one right here on my chest, if you haven't already subscribed to that one, go ahead and do it. But he was talking about going to one of these like medical conferences or something. And then afterwards, like, like was like 50%. It was like a, like a whole bunch of like, like a high percentage of people were pretty much going to be like losing their job because the AI can like do all of it thing there. So it's going to be a less need for like all the different staff because of this. And then I also talked about in that video too, and I'll talk about it here that my wife, she's a dental assistant. And when they take x-rays now, the AI instantly can like tell what's the issue is highlighted all that like instantly. And she was talking about like how it took like years, you know, like for them, like to, you know, learn about all the different stuff, learn about these x-rays and how to see X, Y, Z. And for it just to look and instantly get this, and then they can just show this to the client and then they're able to see it all color coded and it being easily understandable. She was like, yeah, it's out there. And like, there, it's like, this tech is already out already out in the field already. So just imagine all the other different like medical things with this AI stuff can do like instantly that people are spending years and years and years to learn that now you don't need that much knowledge because I bam, got you right there. So yeah, yeah. I think those were pretty good. You know, some of the safest jobs, you know, from, from the AI, I was surprised they didn't say plumbing or anything like that, but they it probably was like number one or within an HVAC, you know? <laughs> But again, that's all right now before the AI can actually like have like a physical body. And then that will change a lot of different things right there. Right now it's more on the digital side, but if you can have a physical body and manipulate things like that, yeah, things can get crazy. <laughs> you can get really crazy. But anyway, guys, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.